A Merry Christmas to you all. Thank you for joining us in this brief uh, Christmas Day worship service. We are Ascension Lutheran Church in Manaqua, Wisconsin. Preaching for us this morning will be Vicar Carolyn Schwantes, assisted by myself and Pastor Sherry Van Lischau. We welcome you and bid you all a very Merry Christmas. Let us pray. All-powerful and unseen God, the coming of your light into our world has brightened weary hearts with peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or of the will of God, man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Praise to you O Christ. Merry Christmas. I hope that you and your family have been able to find moments of joy and wonder and peace in this holiday season. It's been an unprecedented season, that's for sure. This whole year, in fact, we've become more familiar than we want to be with words like unprecedented and uncharted and adaptability and quarantine and social distancing Last Christmas, I sat with my family and I wondered what this Christmas would bring. We worshiped through a marathon of Christmas services, being part of choir and handbells and being there for the multiple services on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And through these services, I wondered, I sat there with a bittersweet feeling sad that those traditions would be changing and excited at what the new year would bring because i knew i was heading out on internship i didn't know where my brain was full of imaginings and let me tell you some of those imaginings were pretty close and some of them were unimaginable at that point in time I had no idea that instead of preparing choir pieces and getting to know the music and rhythms of my new congregation, that we would be not worshiping in the building and having to come up with alternate backup plans and backup plans to the backup plans. I never imagined that my first Christmas sermon would be to a camera in my living room. 
I never imagined how many outtakes it would take either in between yelling at the cat and trying to not start over. <laughs> but Christmas brings with it certain expectations. What are the expectations that you have for Christmas that you're missing out on this year or have been able to find in other small ways? Is it the smell of cookies, baking, and Christmas scents and spices like cinnamon and ginger and the smell of the Christmas tree? Is it the songs of hymns playing? We expect the nativity stories of Matthew and Luke. We expect to hear the words of a decree going out for a census to be taken and Mary and Joseph traveling to Bethlehem. We expect stories of angel pronouncements and holy dreams. We expect stories of shepherds and miraculous stars and wise men traveling from afar. It's weird when you think about how unprecedented these stories really are. We hear them with the familiar lens of the ages. We know how these stories are going to turn out. But yet, how unprecedented must they have been? One of my favorite stories, one of my favorite passages in scripture, is John's version of the Christmas story. And to me, it sounds more like a holy poem than a Christmas story. Every year, I expect this story, and every year I'm surprised by it. I have a confession to make. I'm not a big fan of Christmas. Okay, I love Christmas, but I have some mixed feelings about it. Maybe it comes from Christmases in college when finals were looming and I was more worried about how those tests were going to go than holiday cheer. Maybe it has to do with living in the northern half of the northern hemisphere and the darkness of this season. Maybe it has to do, maybe, m most likely it has to do with the to-do lists and the unnecessary pressures that I put on myself to get it all done, to find the perfect present, to have it all wrapped and to get all the decorations up, including taking down the Easter garland and Halloween decorations that are unfortunately still on my front porch. But I am not here to remind you of that to-do list or of all of the stresses that tend to go with this season from trying to make the perfect Christmas. Instead, I want to tell you about why I actually do love Christmas. Somewhere in the middle of all of the stress and pressure, every year there comes to me a moment of truth and clarity, and that moment turns into more than one moment. Somehow, somewhere, the good news always cuts through the chaos. Somehow, Christ comes over and over in word, heard in the prophet, promise of the prophets, heard in the nativity stories, heard in the hymns and the laughter of children and in words of love and prayer that we share together. And we hear the good news in the word, God showing up in scripture. And I think this is why God, John's prologue is my favorite. Somehow every year I hear with fresh ears the word that has been since the beginning of creation, always with us embodied in flesh, God with us, Emmanuel, 
at one and the same time fully God and fully human. There since the beginning of creation, there in that moment in Bethlehem, and later in Jerusalem, and there now, here now in us. Even in this year, especially in this unprecedented year, I love Christmas. I love seeing the ways in which Christ shows up among us and in us. God showed up in the creative ways that we gathered this year. God was present in the columbarium and in the parking lot present in scripture and song and hymn and prayer, in luminaries and in bonfire. God is present even in this technology that we use to worship, that allows us to connect in spite of distance. Instead of all of the work of us prepared, preparing for this season, we see the ways in which God prepares us to receive grace and truth, the ways in which God reaches out to us across time and space. This year, I pray that we recognize Christ in our midst. I pray that we find connection instead of isolation. And I pray that we hear the good news and proclaim it to the world this Christmas. Amen.
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you this Christmas day through Jesus the Word made flesh. Go in peace, share the gift of grace in Jesus. Thanks be to God.